Welcome. Here's an interesting one today. We're going to create our very own NAS drive on your wireless hub using simply a USB stick and the little USB port that's found on the back of most wireless routers. Very quickly on this video, we're going to refer to a router as a router. Some of you might be confused and think, what's a router? It's, some of you might know it as a, um, a router. Uh, but it's a router. Um, anyway, we'll call it a wireless hub. We're going to connect this USB stick here. Picked this up yesterday for £3.78. Uh, that's about 4 or $5 on Amazon. I'm not going to put the link in the description. You can find your own. I'm quite sure you're capable of that. Uh, but I'll, I'll get flung out of the YouTube Creators Guild for that. Uh, anyway, well, this is dead easy. And we're going to create uh, home storage on your wireless router. And we're going to use, in this case, 32 gigabyte stick. That's enough for about 30 odd films, 10,000 photos, if that's what we want to use. And it's incredibly easy to set up. Let's have a look at this. Computrain. So on the back of the router, we're going to go ahead and connect the USB drive into the USB port that's found on the back of most home routers. The instructions on this video, as I mentioned, uh, apply to, to Plusnet hubs and BT home hubs. The, the instructions for your hub, if you're not on these networks, will differ only by the difference in the default gateway, which we'll get to. Okay, so we've connected our USB stick to the back of the router and here we are on the desktop now. And of course it's not showing up yet. We've got to tell Windows, we've got to tell the computer what it is and where it is. We have to map the drive. Now the first thing that we're going to have to do, the instructions that we're using here apply to, uh, to BT Home Hubs and Plusnet routers. But the first thing you'll have to do, depending on what router you have, you'll have to determine what your default gateway is. Don't let this confuse you. We're going to get and acquire our default gateway. To do this, we right click on the start menu flag and we'll take Windows PowerShell. And in Windows PowerShell, we're going to simply type ipconfig and enter. Now, when we've entered that, the bit we want is the default gateway. In this case, if it's a BT Home Hub or a Plusnet router, the, the gateway is generally speaking, unless you've changed it, is 192.168.1254. Now, depending on what kind of router you're on, the, the last batch of numbers, it might be 0 0.1 or 1.1, uh, these last numbers might change. You've got to have a note of that number. Okay, next step. We open the run. Now that we've taken a note of that number, 192.168.1254, and the dots, um, 1254. So we know that number. We're going to open a run command or a run dialog box. Same again, right click onto the start menu. This time we take run. And in the run box, we're going to type two backslashes, then the address 192.168.1.254. Your default gateway, whatever you've determined that number is, that's the number that has to go in there. So two backslashes, then enter that number. We OK that. And here we go. Now, the USB has shown up. It's shown up in this case. It's called itself USB 2 because I've had a, another stick in there before. And what we want to do here is map this drive to, to give it a, um, an address on Windows so the Windows recognizes it every time you switch on. In order to do that, we right click and we want to map network drive. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, it will, by default, it will probably pick the letter Z. You really do want to stick to the back end of the alphabet here because if you're connecting other devices, commonly uh, external drives and other things, USB sticks, um, you don't want to cause conflict or confusion. Let's stick to the back end. You can change this to Y, X, W, whatever you want. Uh, let's use Y. So we're going to use the drive Y in this case. And it's all fine. So we hit finish. And that is it. Now we've got a USB stick connected to a router and it's acting as a NAS drive. Now, if we close all these down and we open up uh, again, we're just going to go for uh, this PC. And here it is. So we have the drive here in place. Uh, if we open up another window, let's just go for uh, some kind of document window of some sort. 
Uh, here's one here. I'll bring this across ba -ba -ba -bum, from the other screen. Uh, here we go. Uh, so let's say we want to copy some files onto our newly created 32 gigabyte NAS drive. There's a, a, an Excel sheet. I'll just drop that across and that's it so we have this nas drive created now the purpose for doing this perhaps you have multiple televisions in different rooms you could put films on there and watch them in all different rooms you can store music on there and sh and share it to different devices um there are all sorts of reasons for doing this perhaps you you you've got multiple computers and you just want to drop files perhaps school homework or something and you just want to drop it from a laptop over onto a desktop computer uh, perhaps for printing or something, um, you can do that. You can just drop files back and forward. And of course, to add the drive, to make it show up on the second or third computer that you have on your home network, repeat the process. Open up run, backslash, backslash, default gateway number, 192, blah, 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 blah. Uh, in that goes, okay, right click, map the drive, same procedure. Um, give it the same letter if you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, give it a different letter, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the drive will show up on both computers, allowing you to drop files between different computers on your network. It can be incredibly useful to have this uh, this sort of virtual or, or made up NAS drive in place. Uh, we've used a 32 gig stick here. Uh, you can of course get these uh, uh, one terabyte or, or, or larger storage capacity drives um, if you want to go to that. Um, now, of course, if you're trying to add an external hard drive, then the procedure might differ slightly. Uh, details on that can be found in the text version of this video. The link, as always, is down in the description or boom, there it's there. Uh, up in the top corner, it's gone. Um, the link is there for the text version which will explain the difference of adding an external hard drive rather than just using a USB stick. It's to do with the formatting of the drive and the power uh, that it has as well. Thank you always for watching and hopefully this has been of help. Let's say bye for now. Computroon on Facebook and online at www.computroon.co.uk